Hello everyone and welcome to the Game Engine programming series where we write a game engine from scratch. Today we'll finish writing the code that saves the geometry to asset files. The main thing that's left to do is to generate an icon for the 3D object and write everything to a file. I'll use the current geometry viewer to render to a bitmap image and use that for the icon. So remember that we have this control and we can use it to just save an image that is displayed here as an icon. And the way that I wanted to do that for a geometry is to render an untextured image to the file. So everything that will be generated here will be saved like this. First, we need to have an icon width. The default width that I would like to use for the icons is 90 pixels. And I am multiplying that by four to render an image that's four times as big and then down sample it. So we get softer edges for the rendered objects. So what I want to do is to write a function in the geometry view that we have that will take this LOD and create a new data context for it, which is a mesh renderer. And that way, instead of rendering it to a control, it will return a bitmap image of it. Here we create a render target bitmap that we can use to render this control to, and it will take the width and height. And the default DPI that we will use is 96, which is also used by WPF as the default DPI for all the controls and images. So if you create any images for icons or anything that will be displayed as an image in WPF, to get the best quality, you need to encode it in 96 DPIs. Now, because we are not creating an instance of this geometry view when we try to render it, we need to have a static instance of it ready for use for this operation. To do that, I'll just add the static instance of this control here. And right now we have a bit of a dark background for the renderer. And when I want to render the icons, I would like to have a lighter background. So I'll set the background color of the 3D viewer here. And now here we can use this instance to render to the bitmap image. Now 
Here I set the data context for the geometry view instance and use the mesh for it. And then I set the width and the height. And because we are rendering in square image, these two will be the same. And the following three steps are the ones that WPF normally does for us when we change anything in the controls, which is just trying to determine the dimensions of the controls and everything that is contained in them. And that way we will have a fully rendered geometry view, which has an image in it, and we can render that image into this bitmap image. And that's the following step. And I would also like to move the constructor of this control to the end of the class to be consistent with the other classes that we have here. And now we can use this function to render this control to a bitmap image. This is something that we can always do for any control in WPF to just render it to an image. Now going back to the geometry asset class, we can continue implementing this function. If everything is okay, we will get a bitmap back. And I would like to resize that back to 90 pixels. And to do that, I'll use a transform. This transformed bitmap will transform the image that I'm giving it by any transform class that is used here. So in this case, we are using the scale transform. Now, because we are going to use async methods to save assets asynchronously, that means that these methods that we have been writing could be executed on a separate thread. And because now we are dealing with a UI element here, we need to run that part of the code on a UI thread. And the way to do that is just to use a dispatcher for the application, which is used for the UI elements. And this way we make sure that this is executed on the UI thread that the application is using. And as noted here, it's not good practice to mix the UI elements with the view model because right now we are in a view model class and view models don't need to know about how they are going to be displayed. But as long as we don't have a graphics renderer that we can use for screenshots, we don't really have any other choice other than doing it this way. And to continue writing this function, we need to read the contents of this bitmap image into a byte array and return it. Here I create a memory stream and then use a PNG bitmap encoder to encode the bitmap that we just rendered to into a PNG image. And that will be created in the memory stream that we have here. And then we can return an array of bytes using this to array function to get the data in this memory stream. Now that we have this function, we can continue in the save method because we weren't done yet. We have now an icon and everything else that we need to save. Here, after that we wrote everything, we check if any data have been written to this memory stream by this binary writer. And now finally we can write it to a file.
Remember that we wrote this function to write an asset file header? Here is where we call it. Also remember that we have an instance of import settings in the geometry asset class. And I would like to actually save the import settings with the data in the geometry as well, so that we can know later on with what kind of settings this geometry was imported or generated. And that means that we need to write a function to binary that will write the data in the import settings using this writer. And that's it. Let's go back to the save function again. Here we write our data to the file. And after each loop, we add this mesh file name to the list of saved files. And if I didn't forget anything, we are done. And now when we click on the save button, this file will be saved to a geometry asset file. I see I accidentally added a new static object here, which is pixel formats. Let's remove it. And then let's save our first ever asset, which is a sphere. And to make it a bit more interesting, I'll create a weirder shape by adjusting the number of segments. Something like this, it looks like a UFO. Let's try and save it and see if it works. Now we are in content folder and I'll call it a UFO and save. And if I open the folder again, then there is no file because apparently something went wrong. Let's see what happened. Going back to our save method, I can set a breakpoint and debug what happens here. Oh, I forgot to, well, of course, if there is not any load groups, then we need to return. So I forgot the exclamation mark here and that's causing the problem. So let's correct this first, rebuild and restart. And there it is, a file named UFO underscore UV sphere. And the UV sphere is added because if you remember, we gave a default name to our meshes here, UV sphere, and that one is appended to the end of the file name that we give it. And if you look at the size of it, you can also see if there is data in there. Yes, 27 kilobytes. So I'll assume that everything in there is correctly saved. In the future, of course, we are going to load such a file and then we'll find out if everything has been saved correctly. But for now, we just cross our fingers and hope for the best. So yeah, that was it for today. I think that's all I have to do for saving assets to files. And then next time I'll start with something completely new because this was the end of the geometry pipeline, which is kind of complete now. We can generate meshes, process them in the asset pipeline and then save them. 
not everything is there of course we need to be able to import 3d meshes yet but that can wait until later when we really want to import assets into the engine but the next step is something that's really exciting because that's completely new and i won't spoil it right now so you'll have to wait until next time to see what it is but i can promise you that most people have been waiting for that part during this entire year of game engine series so i hope you enjoyed watching this video and you learned something new and i hope to see you next time thanks for watching if you like this video please feel free to like and subscribe if you join me on patreon you'll get access to the code on github so you don't have to type everything over from the video plus there are also other nice goodies and rewards exclusive to my patreon supporters please use the link in the video description to check them out I hope to see you next time, until then take care and happy game engineering!